I sometimes wake up drunk. I don't think you've a great deal to worry you there. Men of your age, there's bound to be a certain unsteadiness on your feet when you first wake up. I don't feel old. No. Well, I've given you a good going over, and for your age, and apart from the fact that you're overweight, short of breath, slightly deaf, a tendency to brood, a, a tendency to dramatize your situation, well, I'd say you were in pretty good shape. I sometimes think I'm dead. Mm, a lot of people are finding it difficult to keep a grip on reality these days. You'd be surprised at the number of people. I love you. Myself. And I love you. I adore you. I adore you. And I love you. I think I love you more than you love me. No, I love you more than you love me. Are you wanting to win again? It's you who's wanting to win. It's you. Why does it always have to be so competitive? But if you love me more than I love you, and if I love you more than you love me, that means that I love you less than you love me, and you love me less than I love you. You're playing with words again. What else is there left to play with? There are all sorts of things left to play with, Freddy. Of course I love you. You know I do. And I need you too. Well, look, all right, I'll, I'll come this evening. Well, I'll, I'll say I'm working on something late. Well, I have to, won't I? Waterloo Station. Yes. Yes, all right then, in about an hour. Goodbye. Yes. Yes. Goodbye. Instead of Concord, we could have spent the money on reproducing Egyptian pyramids. Now, every major city could have had its own pyramid, its own folly, at a fraction of the cost of Concord. And we'd have had follies of some permanence and a tourist attraction for years to come. No need to travel to Egypt to see the pyramids. Fly Pan Am, Stratford upon Avon, Buckingham Palace, and a pyramid thrown in. Would you excuse me, please? What? Uh, could I just squeeze in? <clears throat> well, why don't you try further along the bar? You're not the mad accountant, are you, Square? The mad accountant? Yes, the mad accountant. 110 million for this, 50 million for that. Uh, non oil deficit up the square. Balance of payments up the square. Uh, up all night trying to balance the books. Uh, trying to think up some tired old story to explain away the entire cock up. <laughs> Give a bit more to the old age pensioner and put up the price of his fags and his pint. Please. All I want to do is to get to the bar. Oh, you can't be. Mad accountant's teetotal and a non smoker. Yeah, he's also stingy, mealy mouthed, and a tight fisted twit. All I want to do is to get a drink. We were just having a philosophical discussion, Squire, as to whether I'll commit suicide before him or him before me. We are in a parlous state, a desperate position. Or do we just imagine that we are? That is the quandary. You must forgive my friend. He's taken a hammering lately. Uh, I have taken a hammering too. In fact, I have taken a hammering all day long. That is why I want to get my, my drink. Why don't you piss off? Ah, uh, please forgive him. He's only been given a year to live. That's why he behaves the way he does. He's not what he was. Well, I'm very sorry to hear it. But I'm not what I was either. None of us are. That doesn't give him the right to be so rude. Yeah, yeah I quite agree. Yeah. If we all went around behaving like him, it, it would be chaos. Yeah. Yeah. Say sorry to the gentleman. Sorry. That's quite all right. Piss off. Harold! Good Lord! Freddy! How good to see you. It must be months. What'll you have? A gin and tonic, please. Uh, two large gin and tonics, please. That was very clever of you. I've been trying to get a drink for the last ten minutes. Sure, luck, like I assure you. This one's very good at avoiding the eye. She very probably caught my eye while avoiding the eye of someone over there. We don't often see you here. Oh, I got tired of Charing Cross. I break the journey here now. Then I stop off at Sloane Square. I like Sloane Square. I like it there. No need to hurry there. Bar on the platform. And there's always another train to come from where the last one came from. Hello, Molly. Hello, dear. Hello, Molly. 
My nerves have taken a hammering today, I can tell you that. Yes, <laughs> mine have taken a hammering too. Excuse me. Yes. Uh, could I squeeze in? I like to stand there. Oh. <laughs> well, if we squeeze in at this time, Sorry. Of the evening, mm -hmm. by all means. Yes. Always like my back to the wall. Mm, please do. A large gin and tonic, please. First today. <laughs> Yes, it's a continuous babble, isn't it? Everyone talking at top speed and no one ever listening to what the other fellow is saying. You ever give a bugger for the other fellow's point of view? Well, that would depend upon the point of view, surely. If the point of view coincided with my point of view, then I think I'd agree with it. Everyone's slowly cracking up. Do you get that? Well, I don't think I'm cracking up. Everyone's slowly going potty. Do you get that? 10,000 professional economists, each getting between 3,000 and 15,000 a year. And you work that one out, old cock. You try and get just one agreeing with another. What a right old cocker. Thank you, the same again. Yeah, yes, please. My nerves have taken a hammering today, I can tell you that. My nerves have taken a hammering too. And mine. Think anyone ever does? What? Actually, ever listen to what anyone else is saying? Well, we're listening to you. No, you're not. You're just going through the motions of listening to me. Well, what do you expect us to do? We don't know you. At least I don't. Well, I've seen him. He's here a lot. He's never out of the place. Yeah, I come here occasionally. Yes, you're usually standing down the other end of the bar. It's a crush, isn't it? That's why I stand with my back to the wall. Can you imagine the mayhem if someone loved a bomb in here now? We don't even know what you're talking about. But my point of view is as valid as anyone else's point of view. That's what I'm on about. Well, if it's valid to you, it's valid to you. It, it doesn't have to be valid to us. See off his rock. Who? Your friend. I wouldn't have thought so. Haven't I seen you in the house? Oh, I've been there once, but only for tea. You look very like someone in the house. He's off his rocker, too. Good night, Molly. Good night, dear. Cheerio, Molly. In the end, it's all babble. Cheers. 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 I do need you. <laughs> I need you, too. Yes, I think I need you. I'm not quite sure if I need you or not. Huh? When you're not here, I think I need you. When you are here, I'm... Quite sure if I need you or not. Uh, when I'm not here, I need you, or think I do. But when I am here, never quite sure either. I think it's because I think I need you. Mm. Have you been drinking? I have had a drink, yes. I thought you had. Where's the torch? I threw it away. Why? Because I did. Well, you shouldn't have thrown it away. I'm getting very clinical lately. Sorry. You didn't seem very happy when you arrived. I have a lot on my mind. These are very stressful times we live in. Events seem to be moving forward far faster than ever before. Sometimes I can't even remember how you came into my life. Hmm. I have difficulty in remembering the exact moment. Did you meet at a party? Very possibly. I'd never want to marry you. Oh. It'd be different if we were married. We'd be here all the time. I like to feel free. Mm. No, I don't like that. I always like to do it. And I never like it done. Does your wife like it? She's never liked it. I'm surprised. No one I know has ever liked it. Then don't do it. I'm only trying to make you happy. I sometimes think I don't want to be really happy. I think I just want to be tranquil, really. I mean, there are an awful lot of people who want to be unhappy, I think. Always want to complain, even if it's just about the weather. They come up to me and complain about their lives as though it were all my fault. Do I make you happy? I don't know. I'm not happy when you're not here. I'm never really happy when you are here. But I'm drawn to you. I do have happy moments. Mm -hmm. Moments of happiness. Mm -hmm. They're quickly gone, quickly forgotten. What about the others? Do the others make you happy? Not really. Except John. 
He knows how to make me laugh. Ah. I'm glad there are others. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm glad it's not just me. Oh, of course there are others. It couldn't be just you. Not many of them want to make love. Not really. Or even know how to. Most of them seem to want nursing. Great big babies when they're undressed. Mm. That hurts. Sorry. There's not much to be happy about these days, is there? Would you like some wine? Yes, I would. Would you like some scotch? I've got a little left. All right. It's Harry's scotch. Good, then I'll have the scotch. Sign of the times, I suppose. Horses. Everybody being so glum. The latest masterstroke is to make us all bankrupt. It's tragic, really. Everything's tragic these days. Every time the phone rings, someone's saying how tragic it all is. What an awful mess they're in. It's usually just to do with boyfriends or girlfriends or money. That's all really tragic. I sometimes think, or like to think, that my life has turned out to be rather tragic. You see, you want nursing too, don't you? There's nothing tragic about you. You're just you. What's tragic about that? Over 300 years ago, Blaise Pascal said, life is a maze in which we take the wrong turning before we have learned to walk. My eye happened upon that sentence quite by chance. I'd gone to the library for some peace of mind, some quiet. And there was a book lying open on one of the tables with that sentence underlined. And at the bottom of the page, someone had scribbled, have finished, cannot go on. Perhaps something will one day impulsively cry, jump, and one will have jumped. Only in the second or two thus remaining, as one falls, will one consider whether one was right to have jumped or not. Those final seconds may well turn out to be the most exhilarating of them all. When will I see you again? Mm, one day. Soon. Possibly. When the need becomes overwhelming. I suppose so. Not much to look forward to, is there? Not much. Don't be so gloomy. Well, some of us have the year 2000 to look forward to. That's, that'll be an incredible night. New Year's Eve, 1999. The looting and burning of shops, if there are any shops. Rape on a colossal scale, if there's anyone left to rape. And the oil will have run out. You must go soon. Do you ever see your husband? No. Never hear from him? Never. The application shall, for the purposes of paragraph F of subsection 5 above, be deemed to be an occasion such as is mentioned in that paragraph. <laughs> Tribunal in respect of the holding or such an agricultural holding as aforesaid. The Minister of State for Agriculture, Mr. Edward Bishop, told the House that the form of drafting was necessary to accomplish what the government. Freddie? Mm hmm? Sure, how to put it? Well, you can put it the simplest way you can. That way it will be easiest to solve. I thought I was going to faint. When? Just now. Are you feeling all right? Yeah. I just felt quite light in the head. It's all right now, it's past. I just felt awfully insecure. Well, you have no reason to feel insecure. I know. You have the house. You have me. And you have your friend. Yes. Feeling faint, a slight loss of blood to the head, nothing more. Everything suddenly seemed so unreal. So what did? Everything. Sitting here, facing you. Well, it is breakfast time. And at breakfast time, it is usual for us to sit facing each That's other. That's what's so odd. It just seemed so completely unreal. You suddenly felt the ground shift from under you. In a way. Hmm. Oh, I shouldn't worry about it. I often experience it. 
Did I seem unreal to you? Yes, you did. Hmm. Did I uh, look like someone else? No. You look like you. You're not still feeling faint? Oh, no. I feel much better. Have you ever felt faint before? Never. Oh, well, I suppose so, but not quite like that. I looked across at you and wondered who you were. When? Just then. Oh. Well, nothing unusual about that. I often look across at you and wonder who you are. When? Quite often. But I'm your wife. And I am your husband. Isn't that rather tactless? What? To say what you've just said. It's no more tactless than you gazing across at me and wondering who I am. I often wonder who I am myself. In fact, I seem to spend more and more of my time wondering. You must surely know who you are. Well, I'm not suffering from amnesia, that's what you mean. Are you feeling all right? Yes, I think so. You sure? Well, I thought I was sure. No, I'm not so sure. Do I look as though I'm not feeling all right? I mean, I, I was certainly feeling all right until you asked me if I was feeling all right. Sitting here, reading my paper, dreading the day to come, but feeling reasonably calm. Pretty. Hmm. You're not hiding anything, are you? Hiding? What? I don't know. Are you? You've been very distant lately. I have? Yes. I don't think I've been behaving any differently from the way I normally behave. Are you hiding something? I am asking you. And I am asking you. You're being evasive. Well, most people have something to hide, I would have thought. After a lifetime, there must be something to be hidden. What? Well, I don't know, something tucked away, hidden even from oneself. Well, I haven't anything to hide. There must have been a, a time when you had something to hide, I would have thought. Yes, but not from you. What a squalid thing to say. What about the others, then? What others? Everyone else. Everyone else? Most people, then. About what they have to hide. If it's hidden and it's hidden from you, Whatever it is that has to be hidden, how do you know it's hidden if it's hidden? Well, it, it, it need only be hidden from the potentially injured party, I would have thought. I mean, it, it may be a matter of common knowledge for anybody else. Then you do have something to hide. No wonder I feel insecure. But you, you only feel insecure now. I mean, you, you, you've you never felt insecure before. Oh, of course I've felt insecure. Everyone feels insecure from time to time. Well, I expect it will pass. What time will you be home tonight? Oh, when I can manage it. There's a big drive on at the moment. A tremendous pressure building up. Why don't you go away for a few days? Where to? You could visit your mother. I'd rather stay here. Yeah, if you're feeling unwell... I'm not in the least unwell. Everything's all right, then? I suppose so. I suppose it is. Bertie called. You know, in the middle age, you find that uh, you still get a certain number of marriage breakdowns, and divorces, and so on. But uh, the problem of marriage at that time is the people who've got into a rut and can't get out. It even comes out in sex. The, um, you know, you get a certain falling off in sex in the middle age. Cheers. Cheers. I just don't want to hear about your quandary. I'm tired of other people's quandaries. I don't want to hear about yours either. My own quandary is my own quandary. Why should I care about yours? Thank you. All you want to do is to give voice to your own quandaries and shut your ears to mine. You've always only been interested in hearing yourself talk about yourself. <laughs> I've never given the chance. I've always been short on compassion. It is music to you. 
to hear yourself talk about yourself. You'll never give the other fellow his turn. His turn? Yes, his turn. His speech in payment for having endured your speech, your recital. Senility, starting at 20. Same again, please. Going through the rituals, everything becoming more and more blurred, less distinct, more easy, less to hang on to as time goes by. All I'm saying is that you are not the only one in turmoil. You're not the only one with problems at the office. You're not the only one in debt. You're not the only one living beyond his means. Cheers. We seem to have fallen into some kind of trap. We've been having this conversation, or a variation of this conversation, uh, on and off for the past ten years. The relationship must have got off to a good start. It must have had a good beginning. I have no memory of when the rot set in. If it had not got off to a good start, the relationship would not have survived so long. I never see you but in such a place as this. Our paths cross but once a month. That still doesn't give you the right to my ear. I have as much right to your ear as you have to my ear. Besides, there's money involved. Money? Huh. You buy a round, I buy a round. It should work out quite simply. When it is I who have bought the round, then it should be my turn to speak. Oh. When it is you who have bought the round, then it is your turn to speak, to bemoan your life, your lot, the very heavy I don't go around bemoaning my lot. You never stop. Oh. Oh. Yours is a wonderful life. Lovely wife, fine home, wonderful woman at your side, mistress. Mistress? Oh, so you said. When? Well, the last time we met. You were drunk. You bragged to the entire bar about your mistress. I don't remember being drunk. I may have had a few, but that's not the same. Yeah, you were salivating. <laughs> Salivating. The sign of the hopeless drunk. Are you calling me a drunk? You were drunk then. Drooling over your mistress. But this is what I find the most depressing aspect of the whole affair. When I look at your face, I sometimes see my own face. What sandwiches have you got? Have more cheese. Cheese. You're surely not suggesting that I look like you. Well, the elements in your face, the way you twist your mouth sometimes, the way it curls downwards, it's just elements of my own face. It's just some of my own inner feelings. It was you who were drunk. When? The last time we met. I remember you salivating. It was you who salivated. You're remembering yourself. You took a step outside yourself and took a look at yourself. It's a curious phenomenon among drunks to be able to take a step outside and take a look at themselves. Oh? It's the astral body stepping outside the body to look at the host. It's the astral body looking at the host in disgust. Or despair. Or bewilderment. If I had stepped outside my own body, I would have remembered. You're confused. You remember stepping outside your own body and you're confusing it with me. It was you who salivated. I have never salivated. It was you who salivated. In my life, I have never salivated. You salivated. Did you kick my ankle just then? If you think I did, then I did. If you don't think I did, then I didn't. Sharp pain suddenly came into my ankle. So it had been struck. Cheers. Cheers. Good to see you again. It's good to see you again, too, of course. Must be months. Hmm. The boom came and went. <laughs> Go for growth. 
Look, I do apologize. I seem to get more dyspeptic as time goes by. It's, it's quite all right. No, no, I, mean, I enjoy my bad temper. I enjoy my bad moods. I enjoy myself. It's, it's the only form of relaxation left to me. And now we pay for it all. What? The boom. Oh. Boom. Now the oil. The mad accountant doing his sums again. Getting them all wrong again. My nerves have taken a hammering today. And mine. An incredibly insulting letter from the bank manager. How is your wife? Oh, she's very well. At least I tell myself she's very well. She tells me she's not very well. Then I tell her she looks very well to me. You know, what's wrong with her? Oh, she, she complains of general debility, headaches, backaches, any number of aches and pains. She wonders aloud about her complaints all evening long. Always some little creep in the debating society, too. Some little shit sitting there with his time bomb ticking away. Awful day tomorrow. Again, sir? Yes. Uh, <coughs> uh, turn them green, please. Turn them green, sir. It might have been Stanford Brook, sir. No, turn them green. Be 10p, sir. Same as it's from Stanford Brook, sir. Can you change a pound? No problem at all, sir. We had a gentleman from here the other day with a 10 pound note, sir. No problem at all. It's the inflationary times we're living in. Soaring cost of these times. He'd come from Turnham Green too, sir. Probably quite a popular place now, Turnham Green. Almost as popular as Hammersmith used to be. <laughs> now, let's see if I can find you a 50p. Don't want to load you down with too much old junk, do we, sir? Thank you. Good night, sir. Good night, you. I do love you. And I do love you. I love you more and more. I love you more and more. Oh, you brought flowers. That's yes. so nice. Mm. You didn't often bring me anything. How long has it been? A month? Mm -hmm. And the need possibly? became overwhelming. Yes. Mm. Do you want to bother to undress? I, I don't mind. Well, then let's not bother. Getting undressed only means getting dressed again, and I've got so much to do. Yeah. I do need you. And I need you. I adore you. I adore you. <sighs> no scandal of any kind. Worth mentioning. I remember when a good scam would reverberate for months. Now they're all done to death in a day. The moment one's over, the next, suppose. Yes. Some tea. No. Time permits. It being Sunday, 
Double the dose on a Sunday. Looking very melancholic, Freddy. I've been sitting here reviewing my life, playing it back in my mind. Perhaps someone will arrive on the scene with news of a scandalous nature. <laughs> Something that will put everything into perspective. The arrival of the messenger with the news, it must have been an, an incredible sight. News of some appalling event that had taken place three months earlier in some foreign country. Exhausted, his feet bleeding, hardly able to walk a step further, but still holding on to his cleft stick. By George, we've won! No. By George, we've lost. Our news of the battle seems to come on the hour, or, or we sit watching it while it actually occurs. <laughs> <laughs> need double the dose on a Sunday, Bertie. No, I need it to steady my nerves. My nerves have taken a hammering measure. Would you... Do you like a drink, Freddie? Yeah, I make it a rule never to drink on Sunday. Uh, not before five. That's why your hand's shaking. My hand is not shaking at all. It's not shaking, is it, Joan? It looks perfectly all right to me. You need a live nerve, Freddie. I sometimes think I imagine it all. Why? Yeah. My life. Freddie, please. An appalling year, really. Chicago, never off the phone. Infiltration everywhere. Reds, wherever you look. Half the nation on one form of tranquilizer or another. Oh, well. Time for a pee. Why do you never bring your wife, Bertie? We never see her. She'll never show. <laughs> I'm beginning to think you're not really married at all. <laughs> I am married. I am married. To Olive. She's not the woman she once was. She's developed a series of highly complicated problems. She refuses to leave the house. She washes herself continuously. Refuses to touch money for fear that others have touched it, for fear that by touching it she will in some way become contaminated by it. She wears white gloves all the time. No, oh, not the girl I married, the English rose, full of fun. The bloom gone now, some sort of degeneration set in. The seeds of which were there from the very beginning, but which I never suspected. Freddie likes squalid plays. Hmm. I don't think I care for the theatre. If the theatre came to me, then that would be different. One has to go to it. I like a play to be about nice people. I like a comedy. I'd like to be taken out of myself. The plays Freddie likes to see are about squalid people. I like a play to reflect my own problems. I like a play to be about people like ourselves. Ourselves? Yes. Not the sort of squalid play that Freddie likes to see. He now wants to go and see the Royalty Follies. I think that's the sort of play I'd like. It's not a play at all, it's a review. <laughs> Where people take off their clothes and walk about the stage and sing. I enjoy these Sundays. <clears throat> I enjoy these picnics. <laughs> <laughs> It was incredible. 
Well, <laughs> meeting Chevy again after all those years. There he was, buffet, victorious, not looking a year older. Same old Freddy. It was all so long ago. I sometimes think I imagined it all. I remember it. The detail. Did you, uh, did you make the right choice? I never knew. Well, you're always Freddy. I'm an Olive. I sometimes think he may be having an affair. Who? Freddy. And then sometimes I think perhaps he's not. Would you mind? I don't know. I have no feelings about it, and I should have, shouldn't I? Where's Joan? She went back to the car. She wasn't feeling very well. Oh? She suddenly felt rather faint. Oh. She, she's all right. all right. Probably just the heat. Good luck. Cheers. Best man won, and good luck to him. One? Good luck. One what? No rancor. No ill feelings. Not on my part, anyway. I don't know what you're talking about. Perfectly civilized way to be heard. One. One what? Well, now, tomorrow is upon us. And the battle starts all over again, man. It is an interlude. A pause. What is? Sunday. Oh. I hate Sunday. I've always disliked Sunday. Olive asked to be remembered too. Thank you. You've got Joan. And I have got Olive. That would appear to be the case. I do hope you're not going to get nostalgic. I hate it when you are. There seems to be no place to look but backwards now, though. Watching the past recede. Speed of light. Hello? Uh, <coughs> is that, um, <coughs> is that sophisticated young lady seeking gentlemen, preferably over 40? Hello? Uh, no. Uh, no, uh, uh, sorry. Uh, goodbye. Uh, this is the wrong number. extraordinary phone call. It sounded just like you. I thought it was you. It wasn't. Yes. All right. Well, goodbye then. Oh, um, Freddy, you remember what we were discussing the other day? At breakfast? Yes. Yes. Well, I'm feeling much better now. Good. I thought you would be. Yes. All right. Oh, Freddy, uh, will you be home late? Oh. All right. I'll expect you when I see you then. Bye.
Who was it? Freddy. What did he want? It's so strange. He never phones during the day, and today he did and had nothing to say. <laughs> Come here. I should feel guilty, Bertie, shouldn't I? And I don't. If you don't feel guilty, you don't feel guilty. Good. He's your best friend. I'm extremely fond of you both, so no harm done. I suppose so. It's just so strange happening as it did, out of the blue. When are you going to New York? In a few days. I won't be away for long. Large gin and tonic, packet of nuts. Will be a hundred p, dear. How much? Hundred p, dear. It can't be. It's gone up again. But it only went up yesterday. And I expect it'll go up again tomorrow, dear. So long as you don't think it was money, you'll be all right. You just think of it as pieces of paper and bits of tin. So you think of it only as pieces of paper and bits of tin. If you think of the pieces of paper and bits of tin as having no intrinsic value in themselves, well, you find you're getting a bargain. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, it'd be lunacy to operate on that level. That's the only level I operate on these days, dear. It's still a hundred feet. <laughs> you're making it up. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I get very tired. It's very arduous working here. So sometimes I make up a figure. Not too high, not too low. I make up a figure that sounds about right. <coughs> I, I think I ought to see the manageress. Well, you will ask to see her if you want to, dear. <laughs> I don't think you'll have much luck. Oh? She's too tired. She won't see anyone. She hasn't seen anyone all week. She thinks most complaints are baseless, without any real foundation, not really worth getting steamed up about. She's not far from throwing in the towel herself, dear. She thinks it's mostly illusion that keeps the whole thing going. And she's also suffering from a crisis of identity, dear. She doesn't really know if she's really the manageress or merely a figurehead. Well, supposing I insisted on seeing her. Oh, if you insist, dear, well, that's different. I expect she'd come in time. But if you were rude to her, dear, it might shove her over the brink. That would be embarrassing to us all. She is a very tired woman. She also feels in some way that she's been cheated by life. See, she very high expectations. She always dreamt she'd marry into money. She read all the great romances when she was a girl. And nothing that has happened to her has matched these expectations. I'm the same myself. I expected a great deal out of life when I was a girl. But you see me? Where I am? Too tired to go on, but in need of the crust that I receive at the end of a long and arduous week. Why should I care about your expectations? Why should I care about yours, dear? Why should you? No one else does. I don't even know you. Well, I don't know you either. For all I know, you might even be the manageress yourself. They offered me the job once, dear. Turned it down. Of course I know you. Well, you just said you didn't. I was only saying that to tease you, dear. You come here quite often. You've always got plenty of money and you've always plenty to drink. Well, I've never seen you before. You've never noticed me before. Just hand over the money. Never a smile, never a nod of recognition. Well, I have a, a lot on my mind at the end of the day. The end of your day, dear. The start of mine. And I don't have to be here. I can sling the whole thing in right now. I certainly didn't come here to be insulted. Oh, I, look, I don't think I've insulted you, dear. But if you think I have, you can always complain to the manageress. But I am a customer. Yes, of course you are, dear. 
I'm very pleased we are to see you. But there are other bars, aren't there, dear? I mean, if you weren't here now, I could be sitting down there reading my book. But I can't get it because you're going to be wanting another drink in a minute, aren't you? I've only managed to read three pages in the last half hour. But you're here to work, surely. You are here to serve the customers. I, I am here to read my book. I mean, you will drive your customers away. The, the bar will cease to take money, and then they will have to close it down, and you will be out of a job. But I can always get another job. I mean, I've plenty of jobs like this one. But you will drive the customers away from wherever you go. There'll always be somewhere else to go. Always. Then where will I go? Well, you'll go wherever you want to go to, dear. I mean, there'll always be somewhere for you to go to, just as long as you've got the cash. Uh, and if you haven't got the cash, you'll have nowhere to go to, will you, dear? Look, you must be a customer yourself. Somewhere at some time. Yes, dear. <laughs> but not here, dear. Eddie! Harold! How nice to see you. Yes, nice to see you too. It must be a month since our paths last crossed. Yes, yes, I suppose it must. Uh, <clears throat> what will you have? Gin and tonic. Um, uh, two gins and tonics, please. Good to see a friendly face. Mm -hmm. Not many about these days. <laughs> we don't often see you here. Oh, I often stop off here. It's my favourite bar, quite. Not too crowded. Yeah. My nerves have taken a hammering today, I can tell you that. And mine. Reeling from one crisis to the next, as usual. Pushing thumbs into dikes all day long. Mm. I sometimes think the dam has actually burst, but that no one has yet got round to notice again. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Everyone holding on to their money as long as they can. We're holding on to ours, they're holding on to theirs. There's no liquidity at all. Mm. More and more stress wherever you look. A lot of strain. A lot of people cracking up. More and more time given to the packet than to the content. Merchandising. Photographers are now. Conferences all day long trying to match the content to the picture on the packet. I can tell you I'm not far from throwing in the towel myself. Must you go? Hmm. Well, not really, I suppose. Could we, uh, could we have the same again, please? There's always another train. Thank God. <laughs> the cloth ear. More and more in evidence. The deaf ear. Nothing to say of the slightest interest. Interrupting the, uh, the reverie with some incomprehensible remark. The political awakening of the child. The child? My wife's son. Awful battles all the time. Cheers. Cheers. Did you say your wife's son? Oh, used to be my son, too. No longer my son. A flicker of revolutionary spirit. Awful rouse all the time. Being picked up on small points all the time. Son flexing his muscles on the father. More boring in real life than in fiction. As far as I'm concerned, he can piss off any time he wants. And that's what I'm off back to. Dinner. My wife being very fond of the ritual. Her settle myself face to face at dinner, the son in the middle just waiting to pounce my boy foot in it. But always useful. The deaf ear. Deaf to complaint. Deaf to anguish. Deaf to all argument. Your deaf ear to mine is mine as to yours. Cheers. Cheers. Hello, Molly. Hello, dear. Hello, Molly. Hello, dear. A light ale. Must you go? Yes, yes, I, I well, really must. Have just one more. No, I, I, I must go. I'm awfully sorry you've got to go. Oh. Cheerio, Harold. Bye, Molly. Cheerio.
Cheers. Cheers. Freddie, if you don't mind, I think I'll go to bed. No, I don't mind. I don't mind at all. You won't be long. Well, I think I'll just sit here and relax a while longer. <coughs> It's been rather a stressful day. Oh, by the way, I have to go to New York. New York? Yes. When? Oh, no, in a couple of days. Why? For the company. With Bertie? No. Uh, Bertie cracked up. When? You mean, he just suddenly cracked. <laughs> Happened yesterday afternoon. He suddenly cracked. <laughs> Poor Olive. What is the government's position? Poor Olive. <laughs> Poor Bertie. <laughs> Poor Olive. Cheers. 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 I hope the pilot's not too pissed. I'll drink to that. You returning or going? Uh, returning. Business trip? Yes. Have any luck? Not much. All right. The lunatic accountant, more and more in evidence. I like to travel. Right me up in the air. You meet all sorts travelling. Yes, I suppose one does. Suspended from one's problems up here. I always wanted a negress. Always lacked the courage. Fear of ridicule, I suppose. Fear of the black man's ding. Is it true or is it myth? Could I keep it up for as long as he and the prowess? Is the black man subtle? Would he ride along for a day and a half? Or would it be like me, all over in 90 seconds flat, with a fantasy not matching the reality, as usual? Oh, my time's past now. Too much alcohol. Too long with my head in the sand. Too much damage done to the system due to the dissolute life. Now, just a dream. Black girl, long legs, slim waist, enormous knockers. Eating yams together under a palm tree in the sunset. <sighs> I'm not gloomy. I'm not down in the mouth. I feel a slight lurch just now. Oh, everything seems quite steady for the minute. Oh, suddenly dive out of control, I hope. <laughs> Did you see the captain as you boarded? No, no, I didn't. I always make it my business to look. He seemed a very embittered man to me. Not too strong a death wish, I hope. Not wanting to take us all down with him. I don't know. It's one's duty to exude optimism. We were fast running out of our reserves. With no shortage of bank managers or beaming politicians. The Bank of England will print more and more pound notes, more and more pound notes for everyone. The fewer Deutschmarks needed to buy them. Everyone will become exceedingly rich. A loaf of bread will cost 17 pounds 10. <laughs> I'm not far short of throwing in the towel myself. I'd like somebody to go back. I've taken a different turning. 
My assets, such as they are, will wither. To be a country milkman, not a postman. Driving up the mountainside to deliver to the crofter the final demand for his rates. speakers. 
Other times it's just recorded messages. It's not all beer and skittles up here, so I'm with jet lag, constant fear of hijacking, no tips. And now there's attacks on our perks. But I can't go on paying for everything, every single increase. Someone has to, sir. Is everything all right, sir? Is everything all right? Are you all right, sir? There's, there's nothing wrong, is there? Can I get you anything? Then there's, there's nothing wrong, then? With what, sir? With the plane. Of course not. We shall be arriving at Heathrow in about two hours. Now, is there anything I can get you? <sighs> yes. Uh, could I have a gin and tonic, please? Uh, I don't like flying. You're safer up here than crossing the street, sir. Damn. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Could I have a scotch, please? Certainly, sir. Thank you. It's a mild evening, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Excuse me. Forgive me if you think I'm being rude. Don't I know you? Yes, sir. I used to be a customer myself once, sir. Till I got priced out of that side of the bar to this side of the bar, sir. Still, you uh, you get a different view of the world from this side of the bar, sir. Once you get used to it. <laughs> I uh, I used to see you at Waterloo Station buffet, sir. You were quite a regular there. Oh yeah. I was there at lunchtime. Ah. Still going strong, is it? Oh, so packed you could hardly get to the bar. Ah. Didn't you have a friend? Oh, I've lots of friends, sir. A lot of them in more or less the same predicament as myself, sir. He, he only had a year to live. That's right. He's helping out at Charing Cross. Oh, he's still alive, then? Oh, yes, sir. Yeah. It, it seems they were wrong in their calculations, sir. Or he misunderstood what they told him in the first place. Oh. <laughs> it seems they gave him two years, sir. Oh, good. Nothing good about it, sir. He went through all his money that year, sir. The night before he was due to go, he blew what was left of it. Woke up the next morning, feeling right as rain. Thought he was in heaven. Till the landlady knocked on the door, brought him back to earth with a jolt. <laughs> we were in business in a way, sir. We dabbled a bit. Did a bit in property, sir. Just dibs and dabs, but it kept us going, sir. Till the bottom fell out of it all. Oh, I'm sorry to hear it. Nothing to be sorry for, sir. As I say, I'm uh, I'm quite happy this side of the counter, now that I've got used to it. And there are the perks. But the trade this bar does, sir, I'm surprised they keep it open. You're the first person I've seen in here in an hour, sir. Mm. Th there was a barmaid here the last time I was here. She's gone, sir. She slung it in. <laughs> it, it seems the manageress went off a rocker one night, just after opening time, and they carted her off. So she slung it in. Said her loyalty was to the manageress and not to the company. Anyway, she couldn't afford to carry on doing her job, sir. That's why I'm here, sir. Just a couple of hours in the evening, sir, but it uh, helps to keep the illusion going, sir. I'm not sure how long I'll be able to stick it, though. It gets very lonely here. How are things in your line, sir? 
Well, it's, it's hard to say. Yeah, it's hard to say about anything anymore, sir. Mm. <laughs> Still, I, I expect the oil will start trickling in soon, sir. Mm. Then perhaps things will start to ease up a bit, sir. Provided it hasn't all been put in hock, sir, by the time it starts gushing out. <laughs> We're all Arabs now, sir. <laughs> Hello, Molly. Hello, dear. Hello, Molly. Light ale, please, and uh, have one yourself. Oh, that's very kind of you. Thanks. Cheers. Cheers. Bertie died. He died. When? This afternoon, suddenly. Where? At home. How? At Corriman. How, how do you know? Only friend. Olive. Yes. Olive. Poor Olive. Yes. Poor Olive. I'm going to bed. Oh. Good night. They all need nursing now. What happened? He just suddenly cracked. How? He just cracked half an hour ago. He's the second in a month. Who is he? I don't know. Well, you must know who he is. His name's Tom. I've only seen him a few times. I met him at a party a couple of months ago. He seemed very nice. What's he do? I don't know. He said he ran an arts program. And the other one, the, the other one who cracked? What, what, what did he do? He was in property. What will you do with him? Oh, he'll come round. They always do. It's just that he won't ever be the same, ever again. You should have phoned. I, I came on an impulse. Do you always phone? I can't be expected to run my life unless everything is managed properly. I wanted to see you. Then you should have phoned. If you'd phoned, you wouldn't have seen this. Anyway, you're not supposed to see the others, and they're not supposed to see you. That's the way it works. That's the way it's always worked. Besides, it's not fair to him. you to suddenly come round and see you. What about me? You've always known there have been others. Yes. You've not minded. No. You're not going to be jealous. No, of course I'm not going to be jealous. You always said you were pleased. Well, yes, I am. But it couldn't be just you. I hardly ever see you. Once a month, if I'm lucky. Why did you come? I came to say goodbye. Goodbye? Yes. Are you not coming again? No. Why? Uh, look, I, I, I just I just wanted to say goodbye. That's why I didn't telephone. I, I didn't want to say it over the telephone, so I, I just got into a taxi and came. I don't mind. No? Been over for a long time. For you too, hasn't it? Yes. I can always tell. But it was nice in the beginning. Goodbye. You should have phoned. Good evening. Could I have a scotch, please?
Yes, yes, quite all right, thank you. Don't be worried for a minute, then, sir. I was expecting you for the barrier. Are you sure you're all right, sir? Yes, yes, I'm perfectly all right, thank you. Yeah, it's trembling, sir. Oh. <laughs> Strange things do happen, sir. Mm. It's the difficult times we live in, sir. Yes, yes, I expect you're right. Excuse me, sir. You got your ticket, sir? Oh, uh, I quite forgot to get one. That's all right. Perhaps you'd like to pay me here. Say, paying at a barrier. They went all going over there, side of the counter, sir. Want some left for us? <laughs> Where's it from, sir? Turn Green, sir. Uh, no, uh, Stamford Brook. Fifty p, sir. How much? You went up, sir. When? Yesterday, sir. Yes. We feel a lot of compassion for some of the gentlemen coming through the barriers these days. As I say, it's the changing times we live in. The oil will be flowing through soon, sir. Get us over the ump. Providing the shake doesn't pull down the price of his, because he's got the price of ours up, sir. Mm -hmm. Man of great wit, the shakes. Man of great humour. There are boys in the Treasury who know what to do, sir. And the Chancellor, whoever he happens to be. Still, they're bound to pick the best brains they've got for the job, sir. They always do, sir. Shall I see you to the barrier, sir? That's very kind of him. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, sir. Good night. I love you, Freddy. I love you. I love you, Joan. I adore you. I adore you. I love you more and more. I love you always, Joan. Always. Always.
Thank you. 